You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Monday, April 15th, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. Topping our news, a 21-year-old Sands Parish man leaves behind his family to mourn his passing as sadly he becomes the island's fourth road fatality for the year. The collision which claimed his life involved a police vehicle leading to the Police Complaints Authority now getting involved. Gary Moreno has been following the story since it began unfolding shortly before 2 a.m. this morning and filed this report. This is the scene of the mishap which claimed the life of 21-year-old Antoine Seaman of Granaway Drive in Southampton. The telltale signs of the impact strewn across the roadway following the collision which occurred shortly before 2 this morning. In fact, so powerful was the impact, the seat of his motorcycle landed more than 20 feet away on a footpath on the grounds of the nearby Willow Bank Resort. The task of investigating this latest road fatality, now the responsibility of Sergeant Dorian Astwood of the Roads Policing Unit. It appears that a, or a police officer was driving a police car west, responding to a call for service around 1.50 a.m. on Somerset Road in Sands Parish, when Antoine was traveling east on a motorcycle and the vehicles collided. The officer commenced CPR with other police officers and first responders, quickly arriving on scene, continuing life-saving measures. Mr. Seaman was rushed to the hospital via ambulance. However, sadly, he was pronounced dead at 2.29 a.m. The fact that the collision involved a police car led to rumors that Mr. Seaman was being chased at the time of the collision. Sergeant Astwood sought to dispel those rumors, as he explained, given the involvement of a police officer, an independent investigation into the events of this morning has already begun. The officer was at the time responding to a disturbance in the West. Formal notification has been passed to the independent body, the Police Complaints Authority, given this incident. However, this is normal practice as required by legislation and also ensures full transparency to the investigation that will now take place. This applies to incidents involving death or serious injury, where an officer acting in the execution of his or her duty causes or appears to have caused death or serious injury to any person. That independent investigation will be carried out at the same time as the one being carried out by Sergeant Astwood, a probe which he says remains in its early stages. He is interested in speaking with anyone who can help identify the last movements of Mr. Seaman from 11 p.m. Sunday, April 14th until 1.50 this morning, Monday, April 15th. Sergeant Astwood could not shed any light on the length of time the female officer who was behind the wheel of the police vehicle involved in the collision has been in service, or whether she had been cleared to operate vehicles at high speed. It's important that we are as transparent as possible. But what we don't want to do right now is preempt and prejudice the investigation by talking on the circumstances and not showing enough compassion towards the family as well as the officer. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Sergeant Aswood can be reached on 247-1009 or 717-0849. And we extend our sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Antoine Seaman. Meantime, detectives are tonight hunting two males suspected of orchestrating an armed robbery of the Champs Variety Store on Glebe Road in Pembroke today around 12.45 p.m. Police spokesperson Robin Simmons speaking from the scene says no one was hurt during the incident. It appears that two men entered the store and made demands of money. One of the men pointed an object at the cashier. It's unclear what the object was as it was covered, but it was believed to be a firearm. They were given an undisclosed amount of cash. Both men left the area on a red motorcycle, believed to be traveling north away from the scene. Police are currently at the scene conducting inquiries, and we are appealing for any witnesses or anyone with any information as to the planning, execution, or the individuals involved or where they may have escaped to, to contact the Criminal Investigation Department on 247-1744 or the Independent and Anonymous Crime Stoppers Hotline 800-8477.
In other news, a man has admitted to threatening to decapitate the premier of Bermuda in the Supreme Court today. Jared Gordon of No Fixed Abode sent death threats to Premier David Byrd by email, stating he wanted to, quote, put a hole in his head and chop your head off with a hacksaw, end quote. According to a report in the Gazette, the offenses were committed between October 2017 and March 2018. Acti Puny Justice One Wolf requested pre-sentencing reports, plus an order for the defendant to stay away from the House of Assembly, the Cabinet Office, and Camden House, where the Premier resides. He was bailed and is due back in court next month. Well, coming up, Flora Duffy makes an announcement. The latest weather news and more. Stay with us. Welcome. Welcome to World Triathlon Festival Weekend. See you at the Sunday Shopping Festival on April 28th. Sunday is the new Saturday. Enter to win a shopping spree or a travel voucher. Brow Triathlon Festival Weekend. There's something for everyone. There are many great reasons to consider buying a Kia or Toyota electric car from Bermuda Motors. Here are the top five. You'll be pleasantly surprised how much money you save over filling up a traditional gas car at the pumps. Plus, electric cars are quick and easy to charge. You'll be impressed by the smooth, quiet acceleration and comfortable ride of an electric car. In Bermuda, there's no such thing as range anxiety. With an electric car, you can typically drive more than 100 miles over several days without having to recharge. Electric cars need very little maintenance. They don't require an oil change spark plugs or tune-up, and there's no transmission or exhaust system to repair. Electric cars are awesome for the environment. They dramatically reduce harmful emissions and don't pollute our island's clean, fresh air. Choose an all-electric Kia Soul or the hybrid Kia Nero or Toyota Prius C e from Bermuda Motors. Ladies and gentlemen, come out for an evening of old school soul. My Bermuda friends, I am Otis Redding III. Thursday, April 18th, the night before Good Friday, come for an evening with me at the Earl Cameron Theater in City Hall. Backed by the one and only Wall Street Band. April 18th, enjoy songstress Olivia Hamilton, soul singer Vance Goder, and Otis Redding III on the City Hall stage, performing some of your favorites. Thursday, April 18th, Reserve your seat now on ptix.bn and join us for an unforgettable night. Are you a drone operator? Did you know there are now three no-fly zones in Bermuda? These include LF Wade International Airport, Police Headquarters in Prospect, and Westgate Correctional Facility. These no-fly zones have been created for everyone's safety and security. Any person who breaks these laws commits a punishable offense and may be prosecuted. Find out more at bcaa.bm. Welcome back. Well, Flora Duffy made it official yesterday when she announced via social media that she will not defend her World Triathlon Series Bermuda title on April 27th. President of the Bermuda Triathlon Association, Stephen Petty, while appearing on Inside Sports Talk Radio on Power 95, admitted this was a very tough decision for Duffy, but it is a bigger picture. I've come to grips with it more that there's a full season. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of races between now and Tokyo 2020. Mm -hmm. And let's focus on her um, recovery and, and uh, you know, being race fit for, for those events. Mm -hmm. The test event this year is um, in uh, the middle of August mm -hmm. in Tokyo. And, right. and she, I know she really wants to do that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, you're, you're riding a high for three years yes, now. Yes. Um, this is a blip, right? Um, but we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll see much better in, in days to come. Yeah. And 
and she will be missed this year. Earl Bazin will have more on this story in our sports report later in the newscast. In other news, debate over the future of the troubled Southampton Rangers Sports Club still in the news tonight with a prominent anti-violence activist expressing his worry that repeat incidents of violence could end up costing the club its liquor license. Turai Trot spoke to community activist and commentator Antonio Belvedere, who hopes such action against the club is never taken. He believes there are stricter security measures the club can take to weed out the bad apples, he says, that are tarnishing the club's otherwise good reputation. Community activist Antonio Belvedere, who has been vocal against violence in the country, is worried that a few bad apples who target this troubled Southampton Rangers club could end up spoiling it for everyone else who follows the rules. I, I feel like, you know, I, I, every time I hear of something happening at Rangers, it's unfortunate because then I feel like, OK, well, this club's going to lose the liquor license. And it's unfortunate because I feel Rangers is a good club. It's just the bad egg spoil it. Mr. Belvedere, however, is hopeful it will never come to this. I'm not too sure what's on the, what's on the liquor license committee's mind when it comes to it, but I feel there could be a great loss for them if it does happen. I'm hoping it doesn't happen for them, but if it does happen, that would be a great loss for any club on the island. Police shut the club down for 24 hours over the weekend in response to a non-fatal stabbing incident last weekend and to a separate incident at the club which saw a man suffer cuts to his hand after someone wielded a broken bottle. While club president Jason Wade has declined repeated requests for an interview with Bermuda Broadcasting News, it is Mr. Belvedere who is defending the members who frequent the club regularly. It's not the members of the club. Um, that I think are, are causing the problems. Um, it's the outside of the, the whole uh, members list. Um, I just think that it's a known place for everybody to meet up, especially on a Sunday. According to the Royal Gazette, officials of the club feel the police, who were stationed outside at the time, could have done more, while other sources say it was the responsibility of the club's internal security staff who were inside to deal with incidents and call the police if necessary. I mean, we have to come to terms with the fact that the police can't do anything to, they can't actually go onto the premises unless they have probable cause to go onto the premises at that time. So if they were told that, okay, there's going to be a fight or that there's going to be, a, that somebody has a gun on their possession on the inside of the club, then they can go ahead and do that. But that's why the clubs have security guards. So rather the security, there was enough security for the amount of people that were there on that night. That could be another question. Um, but I feel there could have been more police presence outside of the club instead of two or three knowing that that was going to be the place to be on that night. The community activist believes there are other measures the Southampton Rangers Club might want to consider implementing in line with similar establishments. Like they've gotten a lot of lightning stuff going on there. When you drive across there on a Sunday night or whenever they're open on nighttime, it actually looks like National Stadium. You know, it's lit up nice, which is nice because they have cameras and stuff and you want it to be lit up when there's cameras in case there are incidents that happen. But, you know, a lot of clubs like, like uh, Mid-Atlantic Boat Club and Work Rackman's, um, it's been brought to my attention that they have uh, swiping and sign-in books. And as a member, you got to swipe and you sign in and you can bring a plus one. So if you bring a plus one and they act up or they do something, then you're responsible for that person. A Bermuda Police Service spokesperson in response to this story pointed out that the police implemented an island-wide policing plan last weekend, which included patrols around the Southampton Rangers Sports Club. In delivering the plan, officers enter the club in the early evening on Sunday, April 7, to chat with security guards and conduct a liquor license check. They then exited the club and remained in the area. It was a short while later when the incident occurred inside the club. Police say as soon as their officers saw an injured man exit, that they responded immediately by providing first aid and taking the man to the hospital. Officers then re-entered the building to speak with security and personnel. Police say they continue to work with the management of the club to create a safe environment. Turning to weather news, another gorgeous spring day, but we have a few showers headed our way. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for the details. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and while it's Monday again, hopefully you had a great weekend. We have a couple of showers possible as we head into the overnight hours here, and we will see some slightly cooler temperatures, so hopefully you enjoyed what we've had today. We have a frontal boundary that is approaching the area, and ahead of the front, 
are getting those winds coming in out of the south and southwest, so that's allowing for that milder air to move into the area. We've been in the 70s. Again, enjoy it while you can because we will be turning slightly cooler over the next couple of days. Not going to be cold by any means, but now that we're at April 15th, we like to see those temperatures going up opposed to going back down into the 60s. Here we are tonight looking at the radar. You can see just off to the west, we do have a couple of spotty showers there, and that is going to be making progress toward the island here overnight tonight. Temperatures right now, again, nice and mild outside. We are in the low 70s. Hopefully you've enjoyed it today or you enjoyed it over the weekend. Humidity right around 80 percent. Winds are out of the southwest between 10 and 15 knots. So a slight breeze out there this evening. The water temperature currently sitting at 72 degrees. Waves inside of the reef running between 2 and 3 feet and outside of the reef a little bit choppier out there between 5 and 8 feet. And we do have some weather alerts to tell you about here. You can see from the Bermuda Weather Service we have a small craft warning through Tuesday morning, and then they're going to reissue a small craft warning once we get into Tuesday evening into Tuesday night. So heads up to anyone who is looking for that particular information. All right, here's your tide times. Right over here, we have our low tide coming in at 12.23 a.m. into your Tuesday morning, and then the next high tide after that coming in just before 7 a.m. on Tuesday. Couple of showers overnight tonight. Temperatures sitting in the upper 60s here. Staying cloudy tonight and tomorrow, the showers are fairly quick to move out of the region here. So we'll start off with maybe a morning shower or two, and then we'll get some peaks of sunshine as we head into the afternoon. But notice temperatures as we head into tomorrow night will be turning cooler with lows in the low 60s. Not bad sleeping weather, though, especially uh, during this time of the year as you start to get a little bit more of that humidity into the area. Here's our future cast as we head through tonight and into tomorrow. You can see that front, that rain moves its way on east. Eventually we'll have high pressure building to our north and what that's going to do for us is funnel the winds down from the north. So that's going to allow for temperatures to take a little bit of a dip over the next couple of days. Looking at temps right now in a few other spots, Jamaica, Barbados and also Trinidad, it's warm outside. We've got 80s and 90s out there. Not quite that hot if you're doing any traveling here in New York City, a high of 62 degrees for Tuesday afternoon. Here's a look at the extended forecast. Few showers early Tuesday and then drying Wednesday, partly sunny skies. Notice temperatures are just a little bit cooler into the end of the week. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. I was diagnosed with uh, illness, very frightening because my son had just turned one and it was a cancer. So I'm young, new baby, and I needed to get the care that I knew would be definitive so that I wanted to be around for him for a very long time. I got in contact with BFNM and BFNM was able to commit at that time to doing at least 50%, so we were comfortable, okay, well, we're gonna go. Uh, we got off the plane actually the day of the procedure and on my way to the limo, my case manager called and she says, Kiana, we got it, you're covered at 100%. And I cried all the way to the office because I was just so happy. The BFNM difference is that I really felt that the case manager really was concerned about my overall care and because of that I really appreciated them. I think that personal care, that willingness to listen and then to work until they were able to get it so that I could get full coverage really made the difference for me. And you're watching the Monday edition of Bermuda Tonight. For over 40 years, the Bermuda National Trust has organized the Palm Sunday Walk on the island. Yesterday was the first time they held the event in Dockyard in 13 years. Maya Palacio has more. Palm Sunday is a time in Bermuda for good weather, anticipating Good Friday, and of course, for the annual Palm Sunday Walk. Conservation officer Lawrence Dowdy says while making the trail, they tried to include local establishments, add steps for accessibility, and await permission to open private property. The process takes about four months. On each walk, we always try to ensure that there are interesting historical and natural features for people to uh, explore on the walk um, and also provide an opportunity for some of those uh, members of the public to get to properties that they wouldn't normally be able to get to 
um, including private property, but also just areas that are previously inaccessible. This year we did Dockyard because it had been 13 years since we'd been there. Uh, obviously lots had changed in that time, so we wanted to highlight some of those changes, uh, but also give people a, a, an updated look at what the Dockyard is doing in the area that surrounds it. The walk is about five miles long, and Executive Director Bill Zhu says this year was a success. We were blessed with fantastic weather, and therefore we saw about 2,300 people come out. Lawrence Dowdy also stresses that the purpose of the walk is to bring awareness to the island of historic sites that need protection. Some of our historic preservation, uh, Lee Foray House is at risk at the moment uh, with the uh, facility actually moving out of there soon. Uh, and also with Mariah Hill and the Parsonage. These are two really uh, massively historical properties that are falling into a bit of disrepair. Obviously it's a, a massive task to try and preserve them uh, and it's up to Bermuda as a whole to try and protect them. For Bermuda Broadcasting News, I'm Maya Palacio. I close my eyes and I can see the world that's waiting up for me That I call my own I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy We can live in a world that we design Cause every night I lie in bed The brightest colors fill my head a million dreams are keeping me away. Over time, your mattress goes through a lot. That's why at Dreams, our experts recommend you replace your mattress every eight years for a better night's sleep. Replace every eight years and sleep better with Dreams. For the world we're gonna make. Made with care, handled with care, delivered with care. Now that's what Dreams are made of. I got these for seasickness last week, and they're terrible. That's strange. I know. I put one behind each ear like you're supposed to, and nothing happened. These are tablets. You're meant to take them with water. I got this pump for my asthma. Hasn't changed anything. Show me how you're using it. It's an inhaler. You're meant to breathe it in. Well, this toothpaste? Definitely off. It's a hemorrhoid cream. That explains why my gums are shrinking. I'm Tony Waterman coming up on The Breakdown this week. $250 billion. That's a conservative estimate on how much excessive alcohol use costs the U.S. economy every single year. We'll explore how much of an economic drain drinking is in Bermuda. And if you thought moderate drinking was okay, think again. A recent study shows a bottle of wine is equivalent to smoking up to 10 cigarettes when it comes to your cancer risk. Plus, par for the course. A look at how team sports could drive a tourism boom in the winter months. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. Earl Baisden has tonight's sports report. The speculation is now over with the announcement that Flora Duffy will not defend her World Triathlon Series Bermuda title on April 27th. President of the Bermuda Triathlon Association, Stephen Petty, said this was a difficult conversation to have amongst the organizers. Flora is the Flora factor. So for us to, to come to grips with it, it, it took a bit of time, but I think there are some positives from it. The, the other girls that are competing are going to look at it and say, well, here's an opportunity for them. Olympic points are on the, on the table. Mm -hmm. But Flora has been very gracious. She's still going to honor her commitment to come to Bermuda. She, um, we've talked about her competing in a relay team. She can, she can swim in cycles, so she's going to cycle for a team. We'll, we'll find a swimmer and a runner for her, so she'll compete in the age group, mm -hmm. which is great for those people who are in that event.
Robin Hood were crowned the Bermuda Football Association's FA Challenge Cup champions following a 3-2 victory over Crossroads at the National Sports Centre yesterday with all five goals coming in the first half. Shakir Smith gave Robin Hood the lead in the third minute and that lead was doubled in the 22nd minute when Tomiko Goda found the back of the net. Donovan Thompson brought Crossroads back into the match when he rounded Dale Eve and scored from an angle. Lejean Simmons restored the Robin Hood two-goal lead in the 34th minute when he beat an advance in Crossroads goalkeeper Deshaun Cooper. Minutes later, Simmons was withdrawn from the match with a groin pull. Crossroads pulled a goal back in stoppage time when Paul Simons found the back of the net to make the halftime score 3-2. to two. The two teams would battle for the second half and 45 minutes produced no goals as Robin Hood represented the trophy. In the opener, the Devonshire Cougars came from behind to defeat the Somerset Trojans 3-2 to two in the Premier Development League knockout final. Noah Brown competed in the Rochester Pro-Am squash tournament in New York. Brown, the tournament's eighth seed, had a bye in the first round. He would take on Ashley Davis from England in the second round. Brown would fall in four games that took 50 minutes, 11-9, 11-1, 9-11, 12-10. Daniel Phillips continued competing at the Tennis Euro Level 1 Rafa Nadal Tour Under-14 Tennis Tournament in Barcelona. He would play two matches yesterday. Phillips took on Guillermo Sanchez in the third round and advanced in straight sets. He would pick up a 6-1, 6 love win. Phillips would then take on Ivan Foreman in his second match of the day and his fourth round match, and he would advance yet again with a straight set 6-3, 6-2 win. The Manders Tennis Management Tennis Bebo concluded at the Fairmont Southampton tennis courts on Saturday with finals action. Tournament number two seed Tego Bean would win the title, picking up the win in a three-set battle over tournament number one seed Makai Witter. Witter won the first set 6-3, but Bean would level the match at 1-1 when he won the second set 6-1. Bean would then claim the title with a third set 6-1 win. The 2019 edition of the Bermuda Bicycle Association's Grand Prix came to an end in the city of Hamilton yesterday. The three-day event concluded with a criterium. Dominic Mayo took a 33-second lead into the final day of the men's A division and took the title overall with a time of 2 hours, 41 minutes, and 38 seconds. Jamie Cousins was second with an overall time of 2 hours, 44 minutes, and 20 seconds. And Nicholas Narraway finished third with a time of 2 hours, 44 minutes, and 23 seconds. Louise Wells picked up the win in the women's division with an overall time of 1 hour, 43 minutes and 37 seconds. Karen Smith finished second with an overall time of 1 hour, 44 minutes and 1 second, while Diana White finished third with a time of 1 hour, 44 minutes and 4 seconds. Sean Trott and Gail Lindsay are the 2019 I-Institute Classic male and female champions. Trott clocked a winning time of 17.32 with Bermuda Winter Olympian Tucker Murphy second in 18.14. Neil Disinqua finished third in a time of 19 minutes flat. Lindsay crossed the line eighth overall with a time of 20.53. Katrina Lindsay was the second female finisher and 11th overall in a time of 21.45. The third female finisher was 15th overall Laura Wright in a time of 22.28. The Bermuda Karting Club season continued at the Rubus Southside Motorsports Park with race day 14. Niall Bean won two of the three races in the cadet class, with Nathan DeCosta winning the other. Scott Barnes took the checkered flag in two of the three races in the tag senior class, with Ryan Burgess winning the other. David Barboza won two of the three races in the L 206 Masters class, with Jeff Souza taking the checkered flag in the other race, while Scott Barnes won all three races in the L 206 senior class. The tag junior class saw Jaza James win two of the three races, while George A. Thomas won the other. Scott Barnes won two of the shifter stock class races with Owen DeCosta taking the checkered flag in the other. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Wednesday, the 24th of April, Michael Ramsden returns to Bermuda, accompanied by fellow Christian apologists Alicia Wood and Vince Vitale, also of the Rabbi Zacharias International Ministries. Once again, we tackle the mysteries and misconceptions arising from the Christian worldview. Has Christianity failed? Where is God in suffering? And why believe in fairy tales? Plan to attend this fascinating forum at the Mid-Ocean Amphitheater on the 24th of April at 7.30. Free tickets at ptix.bm. Welcome to Furniture Walk. At Furniture Walk, we have one of the island's widest selections of top brand home furnishings. Including Stearns & Foster, 
Craftmaster, Natootsie, Universal, Facet, and many more. Whether you're freshening up your living room or remodeling your entire home, we have all the brands and top quality furnishings you'll need. We also offer in-house financing. Can't find what you're looking for in-store? No problem! We can special order it for you. Our website has an even larger selection of the world's best furniture. Stop by our Paget store and we'll be happy to help you get on your way to finding the perfect selection for your home or office. Furniture Walk. Furnishing Bermuda's homes for over 30 years. And on a programming note, tonight's Let's Talk with Gary Moreno will tackle a subject close to many people's hearts, sports. Gary's guests are Norbert Simons, Director of Youth and Sport and Sports Journalist Earl Baisden. Topics will include sports, scholarships, nurturing athletic talent, how Bermuda treats its sporting heroes, and how acts of violence impact sporting clubs. That's Let's Talk with Gary Moreno tonight at 8 p.m. right here on ZBM TV 9. That's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Good night.